In this video, I'm going to demonstrate four different ways you could easily set the white and black point in your image. What prompted me to do this video is I've realized that a lot of people are confused about white and black points in adjusting the whites and black slider. And over the years, I've covered all these, but all in different videos. So I thought I'd do it all in one video. We're going to be working on this image. In the description below this video, I'll have all the gear info, the settings I used, and the exposure info uh, listed if you're interested in checking that out. This was taken on the back steps of Buffalo's History Museum, and that is a statue of Abraham Lincoln sitting in a chair. And I've already adjusted all of the basic adjustments I want to adjust. I have not done the whites or blacks yet. And the only other adjustments I've done are lens correction so i haven't done anything else at all now one way you could adjust the white and black point is a way i've taught in all the different videos i've done on lightroom you could hold in the alter option key it's alt if you have a pc option if you have a mac click on the whites slider the screen will turn black the idea here is that you would move it then to the right until you see some colors coming through what you'll see, in this case, we're seeing a lot of blue and white, a little bit of red and green in the middle. Those are the individual color channels that you're starting to clip. When you're clipping a color channel, that in this case means you're making it so bright that there's no detail left. Where there's white, you're clipping all three color channels, red, green, and blue, and it's uh, uh, now so bright there's no detail at all. Typically, most folks, when they adjust the white point, they like to have detail in the highlights. So what you would do is you would back it off until all those colors dissipate to right about there. So that is a at least textbook perfect white point. Now, I encourage you, you could move it around from there just, you know, to adjust it more to taste. And then similarly, you do this for the blacks. You hold in that alter option key, click on that black slider. You can see we're already clipping some of the blacks. You can see there's black. This time, of course, the screen turns white. And you can see there's some green. We're clipping the green channel and we have black. That means we're clipping all three channels. If I keep moving it to left, we'll clip more and more. Typically, I like to clip in my, at least my landscape and cityscape shots, I like to clip the shadows or blacks a little bit. So I will turn that so I get some clipping. Uh, for me, that give, in my opinion, gives my image a little more tonal depth. I have absolute black and I have almost absolute white. And that's the way I like to adjust those. So that is one way to do it. So I'm going to reset them by just double clicking on the name whites and the name blacks. So they're reset. Another way is you could get a quick automatic adjustment by holding in the shift key and clicking on the word or the name whites. So when I double click on that, it gives me an auto adjustment. It's the same as if I clicked auto up here. Similarly, I could do that for blacks, hold the shift key in and double click on blacks. And you can see it gave me a minus three. That's the auto adjustment. Now I often will do this method if I have a lot of images to process like I did, you know, recently did uh, my son's engagement photos. So I had a lot of images to do. So I would do this and then I would adjust it from this point. If I want maybe shadows a little darker, I just tweak it. So I do that to get me close in the ballpark and then I'll adjust it from there. Now I would add that that little trick holding in the shift key and double clicking on the name, you could do that for any of these. So if you want to uh, get an uh, like adjust highlights automatically, hold the shift key in, double click on highlights, and you'll get an automatic adjustment there. I'm going to move it back down to around where I had it. But that gives you an idea. You could do that for all those uh, tone adjustments and some of the others as well. All right, those are two methods. The third method, press the J key. When you press the J key, you're turning on the clipping indicators. And you'll notice that we're clipping some of the blacks down here because that's the blue coming through. Blue indicates you're clipping blacks. Now, if I go to the black slider and move it more to the left, you'll see I'll get more and more blue appearing. So I'm clipping more and more of the blacks. Similarly, if I go to the whites and I move that to the right, eventually you'll see red come through. That means I'm clipping the, the whites. 
same thing. Most folks don't like to clip the whites at all. This is mainly because when you print an image, if you're clipping white, so if I printed this, no ink at all would go down wherever that red is. None. And typically you want the printer to put some ink there because it will look odd uh, when the printer paper doesn't have any ink at all there. So what you would do is you would just pull the whites down until all the red is gone. It's the, pretty much the same idea of holding in the alter option key. And then with black, she would adjust that to taste. You could bring it so no blue appears at all. Or you could do it so you get just a little bit of clipping like I prefer. And then when you're done with the adjustment, hit the J key again to turn those off. Alternately, you could turn them on and off up here in the histogram. You notice on the left-hand side, we have a little triangle. If I hover over it, you'll see the blacks. Uh, the blue is indicated, the indicator comes on showing that I'm clipping those. I could keep it permanently on by clicking on that triangle so it's permanently on. Then I could come in, move the black slider to taste. I could turn it back off by clicking on that triangle again. Same thing for highlights, which is over on the other side. I could click on that triangle to permanently turn it on, or I could just hover out over it to have it temporarily on. Then I could move the whites until I see the red and adjust it from there. And then when I'm ready to turn it off again, I could hit the, that click on that triangle again. That's the third way. I'm going to reset it. I'm going to show you the last way you could adjust the whites and blacks. You could do it right from the histogram. You'll notice if you hover over the histogram right here, you'll notice in the left-hand side, it says blacks. As I move to the right, it will say shadows. If I go to the middle, it will say exposure. If I go to the right, it says highlights. And if I go to the right, it says whites. What a lot of people like to do is they like to look at the histogram and they want the histogram to go edge to edge. So in this case, the highlights or the whites aren't going all the way to the edge. So you would go over the histogram, so it says whites over here in the left-hand corner, and you'll notice the cursor turns into this horizontal arrow with a line through the middle. That's encouraging you to click and drag. So we're going to click with the left mouse button. You'll see it disappears when I clicked with the left mouse button. And I'm dragging the mouse to the right, and I'm just moving the entire histogram to the right. And you could see, if you look at the whites slider, which is below, as I move this, I'm moving the whites slider. So I'll move that right to the edge. Similarly, I want to clip the shadows a little bit more. That's my style, or the blacks a little bit more. I would click, drag to the left, and I could... Um, I could just clip those a little bit more so make the shadows or the blacks a little darker. So that's another way to do it. And you could adjust any of these different quadrants of the histogram. So if I want to adjust shadows, I'll just hover over the part that are, is considered shadows. And then I could click. And when I move it, you'll notice that the shadow slider moves. Similarly, in the middle, it's, it says exposure, but technically, uh, if you use kind of the universal parlance of what this means, this is actually brightness. Uh, when you adjust brightness on some applications that have a brightness slider, it's actually adjusting the brightness of the midtones or the exposure of the midtones. So you can see I'm in the midtones area. If I move it to the right, I'll make it brighter. If I move it to the left, I make it darker. But it is moving the exposure slider. So that is that and, uh, and then finally if you want to adjust the highlights you could go over this part that says highlights click with the left mouse button and drag that around and you'll notice the highlights slider is moving so that is another way you could get a white and black point and uh, you could other you know adjust the highlight shadows and exposure as well if you'd like to and similarly if you want to um, get an automatic adjustment by holding in the shift key and double clicking on a name. You could do that for many of these. It won't do it like for texture. It just resets it. You don't want to, you know, just, it won't work on that. But I do think it will do it on vibrance. If we hold uh, the shift key in and double click on the word vibrance, you could see it gives me an automatic adjustment there and saturation. So you could see you could get automatic adjustments on any one of the sliders that are affected when you click auto by holding in the shift key and double clicking on the name of the slider. So 
That's four different ways you could get easy white and black points in any image in Lightroom. Thank you everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.